Rail transport in Australia is a component of the Australian transport system. It is to a large extent state-based, as each state largely has its own operations, with the interstate network being developed ever since Federation. As of 2019, the Australian rail network consists of a total of 32,894 kilometres of track built to three major track gauges, 17,972 kilometres of standard gauge, 2,683 kilometres of broad gauge, and 11,930 kilometres of narrow gauge lines. Additionally, about 1,400 kilometres of 610 millimetres, two feet gauge lines support the sugarcane industry. Except for a small number of private railways, most of the Australian railway network infrastructure is government owned, either at the federal or state level. The Australian federal government is involved in the formation of national policies and provides funding for national projects. Total employment in rail transport in Australia since 1984 The Spirit of Progress Press launched with locomotive S302 Edward Henty at Spencer Street Station prior to the demonstration run to Geelong. In 1937 very little thought was given in the early years of the development of the colony-based rail networks of Australia-wide interests. The most obvious issue to arise was determining a track gauge. Despite advice from London to adopt a uniform gauge, should the lines of the various colonies ever meet, Gauges were adopted in different colonies, and indeed within colonies, without reference to those of other colonies. This has caused problems ever since. Attempts to fix the gauge problem are by no means complete. For example, the Mount Gambier line is isolated by gauge and of no operational value. With the electrification of suburban networks, which began in 1919, a consistent electric rail traction standard was not adopted. Electrification began in Melbourne in 1919 using 1,500 VDC. Sydney's lines were electrified from 1926 using 1,500 VDC, Brisbane's from 1979 using 25 kilovolts AC, and Perth's from 1992 using 25 kilovolts AC. There has also been extensive non-urban electrification in Queensland using 25 kilovolts AC, mainly during the 1980s for the coal routes. From 2014 Adelaide's lines are being gradually electrified at 25 kV AC. 25 kV AC voltage has now become the international standard. The first railways in Australia were built by private companies, based in the then colonies of New South Wales, Victoria, and South Australia. The first railway was privately owned and operated and commissioned by the Australian Agricultural Company in Newcastle in 1831, a cast iron fish belly rail on an inclined plane is a gravitational railway servicing a pit coal mine. The first steam powered line opened in Victoria in 1854. The four kilometres long Flinders Street to Sandridge line was opened by the Hobson's Bay Railway Company at the height of the Victorian gold rush. In these early years, there was very little thought of Australia wide interests in developing the colony based networks. The most obvious issue to arise was determining a uniform gauge for the continent. Despite advice from London to adopt a uniform gauge, should the lines of the various colonies ever meet, gauges were adopted in different colonies, and indeed within colonies, without reference to those of other colonies. This example has caused problems ever since at the national level. In the 1890s, the establishment of an Australian federation from the six colonies was debated. One of the points of discussion was the extent that railways would be a federal responsibility. A vote to make it so was lost narrowly, Instead the new constitution allows the acquisition, with the consent of a state, of any railways of the state on terms arranged. Between the Commonwealth and the state and railway construction and extension in any state with the consent of that state. However, the Australian government is free to provide funding to the states for rail upgrading projects under Section 96. Suburban electrification began in Melbourne in 1919. Sydney's lines were electrified from 1926, Brisbane's from 1979, and Perth's from 1992. Mainline electrification was first carried out in Victoria in 1954, closely followed by New South Wales which continued to expand their network. These networks have fallen into decline, in contrast to Queensland where 25 kV AC equipment was introduced from the 1980s for coal traffic. Diesel locomotives were introduced to Australian railways from the early 1950s. Most units were of local design and construction, using imported British or American technology and power equipment. The three major firms were Clyde Engineering partnered with GMEMD, Ghanaian with General Electric, and A. Goodwin with the American Locomotive Company.
The major British company was English Electric, with Swiss firm Sulzer also supplying some equipment. This continues today, with Downer Rail and UGL Rail the modern incarnations of Clyde and Gonanen respectively. Note, narrow gauge below is 1067 mm, standard gauge below is 1435 mm and broad gauge below is 1600. Um total private and public sector railway engineering construction value. While Australian federal governments have provided substantial funding for the upgrading of roads, since the 1920s they have not regularly funded investment in railways except for their own railway. The Commonwealth Railways, later the Australian National Railways Commission, which was privatised in 1997. They have considered the funding of railways owned by state governments to be a state responsibility. Nevertheless, Australian governments have made loans to the states for gauge standardization projects from the 1920s to the 1970s. From the 1970s to 1996s, the Australian government has provided some grant funding to the states for rail projects, particularly the Keating government's One Nation program. Announced in 1992, which was notable for standardizing the Adelaide to Melbourne line in 1995. Significant government funding was also made available for the Alice Springs to Darwin Railway, opened in 2004. Substantial funding is now being made available for freight railways through the Australian Rail Track Corporation and the AUS Link Land Transport Funding Program. The Australian Rail Track Corporation is a federal government owned corporation established in 1997 that owns, leases, maintains, and controls the majority of main line standard gauge railway lines on the mainland of Australia. Known as the Designated Interstate Rail Network. In 2003, the Australian and New South Wales governments agreed that ARC would lease the NSW Interstate and Hunter Valley networks for 60 years. As part of this agreement, ARC agreed to a $872 million investment program on the Interstate Rail Network. The funding sources for the investment included an Australian government equity injection into ARC of $143 million and a funding contribution of almost $62 million by the New South Wales government. Under the AUS Link program introduced in July 2004, the Australian government has introduced the opportunity for rail to gain access to funds on a similar basis to that of roads. AUS Link established a defined national network of important road and rail infrastructure links and their intermodal connections. Rail funding has been announced for signalling upgrades to numerous railway lines, gauge conversion of existing broad gauge lines in Victoria to standard gauge. New rail links to intermodal freight precincts, and extensions to existing crossing loops to permit longer trains to operate. Funding is focused on the national network, including the following rail corridors, connecting at one or both ends to state capital cities, after the 2007 federal election. The government body Infrastructure Australia was created to oversee all rail, road, airports and other infrastructure at a national level. Looking along the Trans-Australian Railway construction and maintenance of network infrastructure is consolidated into non-profit. Government bodies and contracted private, in the case of the interstate network and various non-urban railways of New South Wales. Victoria and Western Australia, the Australian government-owned Australian Rail Track Corporation, the New South Wales Regional. Network, John Holland Rail, and rail infrastructure throughout the southern half of Western Australia, ARC Infrastructure. ARC has a working relationship with Queensland Rail about the use of the 127 kilometres of standard gauge line between the Queensland border and Fisherman Island. ARC intends to start discussions with Queensland about leasing this track once the NSW arrangements are bedded down. ARC also maintains the NSW Hunter Valley Network under contract. On January 1, 2012, John Holland commenced the operation and maintenance of the New South Wales Regional Network under contract from Transport for NSW, comprising 2,700 kilometres of operational freight and passenger rail lines. ARC Infrastructure has a lease until 2049 on 5,100 kilometres of Western Australian rail infrastructure, from Geraldton in the north, to Leonora and Kalgoorlie in the east, and south to Esperance, Albany and Bunbury. It is responsible for maintaining the network and granting access to operators. Other railways continue to be integrated, although access to their infrastructure is generally required under national competition policy principles agreed by the federal. State and Territory Governments Inland Rail is a railway construction project extending from Melbourne to Brisbane along a route west of the Great Dividing Range. Construction in stages commenced in 2018 and is scheduled to be completed in 2025, using existing routes where appropriate.
Pacific National Intermodal Service from Perth in Western Australia TAS Rail Container Train with Driving Van DV2150 in Devonport, Tasmania The major freight operators on the rail networks, excluding integrated. Mining railways, are, other rail freight operators include, licensing of personnel with nationally recognized credentials facilitates the transfer of those employees from one state or operator to another. As traffic demands. Total freight movement including the mining railways, in 2015-16, there were 413. 5 billion ton kilometers of freight moved by rail. Overall railway freight in Australia is dominated by bulk freight, primarily iron ore and coal. In 2015-16, Australian railways carried over 1. 34 billion tons of freight, 97% of which were bulk movements. Interstate bulk freight in Western Australia, principally iron ore movements, accounted for 61% of national rail freight tons. Bulk movements in Queensland and NSW, principally coal were 17% and 14%, respectively. Map of Passenger Railway Services in Australia State Government-Owned Rail Services, Queensland Rail City Network and Travel Train Services NSW Trainlink Services v. Line Services Transwa. Services Journey Beyond Services, Indian Pacific The Overland The Gone The Overland The Gone Long Distance Rail and Regional Rail mostly operates on a state-by-state -state basis. The main companies that provide service are Journey Beyond, NSW Trainlink, Queensland Rail and B-Line. Journey Beyond operates four long-distance trains, the first three being upmarket experiential services, New South Wales government-controlled NSW Trainlink operates 10 long-distance passenger routes. All routes originate from Sydney, V Slash Line, a Victorian government owned not for profit statutory corporation, operates both regional and long distance services along the Victorian regional network. V Slash Line operates eight long distance services from Melbourne, Queensland Rail, a state entity, operates several passenger lines under its train subsidiary. Six routes target the domestic market, an additional three Queensland Rail routes are aimed at providing tourist services. These services are operated under contract. The Public Transport Authority, a government agency of Western Australia, operates various buses and four long distance rail routes through its Transwa subsidiary. All routes originate from Perth. A Sydney trains be set departing Flemington Station E class Melbourne trams operated by Yarra Trams. There are many heritage railways and heritage tramways in Australia, often run by community organisations and preservation societies. There are also some privately operated passenger services, such as, Cane Train near Mackay BHP Iron or Train arriving into Port Hedland, Western Australia. Tramways with 610mm gauge for the transport of sugarcane have always been operated as private concerns associated with the relevant sugarcane mill. These tramways are quite advanced technically, with hand-me-down rails cascaded from the normal rails, remote-controlled brake vans, concrete sleepers in places, and tamping machines in miniature. The 20 or so separate tramways cooperate in research and development. Tramways were often associated with the transport of timber to sawmills. Various gauges were used, including the 610mm gauge, which was also commonly used for cane haulage. Wider gauges were sometimes used as well. Queensland had a number of 991mm systems, some on wooden rails. In some areas 1067mm was used, a considerable investment of resources. In the early 21st century, the disused Queensland rail line to S1067 mm in the Brisbane Valley was used for timber haulage. Five isolated heavy-duty railways for the cartage of iron ore in the Pilbara region of Western Australia have always been private concerns operated. As part of the production line between mine and port, initially commencing in 1966 with Goldsworthy Mining Associates Goldsworthy Railway and recently in 2008 with Fortescue Metals Group's Fortescue Railway and in 2015 with Roy Hill Holdings Roy Hill Railway. These lines are continually optimizing axle loads and train lengths that have pushed the limit of the wheel-to-rail interface and led to much useful research of value to railways worldwide. An open-access 6th standard gauge iron ore network was proposed to the Okaji port in the Midwest region to the south of the Pilbara but the project is currently on hold pending a viable business case. AV slash line Blossity in New South Wales XPT at Orange Station several medium speed rail services operate on existing track that has been upgraded to accommodate faster services and or building technology. Some of these services use high speed capable rolling stock. Electric tilt train at Sunshine Station high speed rail has been repeatedly raised as an option since the 1980s and has had bipartisan support for research and land purchase. 
The focus usually falls on Sydney to Melbourne, where it is seen as a competitor to the busy Sydney-Melbourne Air Corridor, with Sydney to Brisbane also proposed. The benefits of regional city development are frequently raised. A detailed study was undertaken from 2011 to 2013, after which the government indicated it would start purchasing land for a rail corridor. In 2016 the Prime Minister indicated a high-speed rail link might be funded privately and by value capture. The Queensland Rail Electric Tilt Train's record speed of 210 km per hour is just above the internationally accepted definition of high-speed rail of 200 km per hour. The maximum test speed of 193 km per hour set by NSW Trainlinks XPT is approximately that. The Transwood WDA-WDB-WDC class railcars used on the medium-speed Transwood Prospector service are high-speed capable, but are limited to 160 km per hour in service. The XPT is also theoretically capable of reaching speeds of 200 km per hour. Carroll, Brian, Australia's Railway Days, Milestones in Railway History, Macmillan, ISBN 978 0333 Thanks for watching.